everybody and welcome back my name is sue and i'm from oml embroidery and over at the computer is dawn hello. hello so before we get started on this week's free dime project which is really cool we're going to talk about placement and how to prepare the shirt we're gonna have a quilt chat this is okay. the newest block and i absolutely love it so it's one block this is it and you can make it look 3d by doing a little bit more light dark and then medium so it'll kind of stand out and uh put them together and this is awesome so this is the eight by eight hoop size and you put it together and you get one big block and then you put the big blocks together and you get a big wall hanging. And if you look at, um, well, the instructions anyways, these form diamonds, which are really nice. Now, I have used two different background fabrics, but that's okay. It looks great. And this one here, when you do four of them, makes a whole different pattern. It's kind of like a pleasant surprise when you put it together. So you could really coordinate those. So it's not fun. It's easy to do. It's really fun. Folded fabric makes it look like you pieced it. Um, easy to sew together the whole bit. I'm a big star. I'm a big star. That's what I decided to call it. And again, it's a complicated looking, but very easy to do yes and all different sizes uh, i think even the smaller ones would look really good and it was easy to match everything up as well and i almost got perfect points i'm off a little bit on one but super easy little bit of quilting there's quilting here but this in contrast makes it look really good makes it look like you know someone had it on a long arm quilter and quilted these parts so what do you think, Don? Do you like love, this one? Oh, I love it. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's a traditional look, and yep. I love all the traditional ones. They're amazing. Um, then I put forth some different ideas. You don't have to make a star. You could do one row of them facing that way, and then the next row of this one facing that way, and it looks really cool. It looks like chevrons. And I really like that too. I played around with it. And then I did half too, half, just the top half and then a top half, so groups. And it looks great. And I put all those ideas in the instructions and I think I put one in the um, description so you can see. And Betty Turner says it would make a very quick quilt. Very quick <laughs> quilt, but also a very traditional mm -hmm. quilt. You could get, especially at this size, you could get really fancy with these triangles and make them, you know, go the right way. But you could fussy cut if it's folded, but you could fussy cut. And you see these, this general style all over the place. And I think it's awesome. I just think it's awesome. I love it. So yeah, you could have a lot of fun with this. Look, I'm getting better at my binding. It's not perfect, but I did one more after this and it is, I'm so happy. My uh, peeking peekaboo pumpkin, I did the binding on it. Oh, I did it, it's awesome. So new block, head on over to OML Embroidery. I think it's $5.99 for the block, which is, a cheap pattern to make a whole quilt so awesome so get stitching you could make that one in time for Christmas so Dawn's mylar the tree is mylar and it looks stunning I can see green and blue we can in see it. it sparkle in camera too good yeah. we have enough light <laughs> we have it so isn't that cute I love it and 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 I used King Star Metallic for the lettering. Oh, did you? I did. Did you bring that back? I put it back where it belonged. Oh, wow, that's a first. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, support the channel, get some patterns, and you can stitch away. Have now, some fun. 
it is fun. I actually really enjoyed stitching out those four and putting them together because it wasn't complicated and absolutely impossible, but it looks it. I would hate to cut out those shapes, the chevron shapes. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. So on to dime and my googly eyes are like, whoa, that's cool. This is the free design, which in and of itself, it's very cool. I love it. We're going to put it on a t-shirt. If you watched Eileen Roche on uh, Between Friends on Thursday, she was wearing the one that's pictured everywhere and it looks awesome. So we are going to work with that. It's a five by seven design. I, of course, am going to bling it up a little bit because I mean, seriously, you got to have silver snowflakes. Well, yeah. And you got to have a gold design here. So gold is on my machine already. And then I'm just going to do regular red and green for this design. So the entire thing is King Star Metallic? No. Oh, the regular red and green. Right. So silver, because it's going to look great, and gold. You don't have to, but I'm going to. Awesome. So... If you guys haven't seen these, you gotta get them. Uh, I absolutely love it. Now this is iron-on fusible no-show mesh. And we're gonna iron it on. I already have, but I'm gonna show you guys. But look at the nice clean edge I got. All you have to do is pull it however much you need and you can, you know, hold this over uh, even the mat will show you and then all you have to do is this Get it started and cut and look at my perfect piece Those dime boxes are awesome. <laughs> I know <laughs> and what I've done not so much on this one But the other one actually I think it fell off I stack them this way because that's how my desk is going so I put a little label right here of what it is so I can just grab the box that I want now obviously when I stack them they're offset a little bit because I don't want this to break or anything but uh, super cool I really enjoyed using it today so what I have done and we're gonna play around with some things here I have added now this is just a regular Gildan shirt and I did this part ahead of time. So this is all that I've done. This is the inside of the shirt and I placed the fusible no-show mesh and I fused it. And this is handy. It'll save you a ton of time, a ton of time because you don't have to mess around with shifting and placement. It's there to stay. It's not going anywhere. Now, when you finish your design and you want to take it off, you just slightly heat it again and then you can peel it back and trim it. So it's not a big deal. So big coverage. I'm not worried about it. I left a little bit showing uh, at the top so we know what's there. But honestly, if you're doing shirts, get in the habit of doing it that way. It's so much easier. So... The next thing I did, you can see I ironed it because I had my iron, but we want to find the center of the shirt. So you fold it in half and you're going to match up the shoulder seams and that is your center. Now you can mark it with a pin if you want. I made a super de doo line, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's cool. So fusible for one of the baubles there's applique we're going to talk about positioning how to set it up in a minute now i don't have a dime magnetic hoop for five by seven and i really dislike my brother one <laughs> so i'm not using it so i'm going to break a rule and use one that's a little bit bigger just because that's what i want to do <laughs> does that make any sense that's what i want to do um, Jill says she just bought the star pattern and can't wait to do it. Awesome. Oh, thank you. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Definitely. So normally on a five by seven design, 
I tell you to use a five by seven hoop and it will get you better results. Um, and I still might do it because I'm having tremendous guilt right now <laughs> using a bigger hoop. Uh, it's just not cool to do it that way. I mean, it's going to be easier, but the closer you have the hoop, the more flat and more tight everything's going to be, and you're going to get better results. All right, let me stew on that for a little while, because <laughs> I do feel... Having the bigger hoop, is that going to cause an issue with because it's a t-shirt? No, the t-shirt's plenty enough big strap. enough. It, it's just... Use the smallest hoop that you can. You should, yes. That is a rule that I have not broken yet. Until today, perhaps. So, going old school, the best way of doing this, if you don't have any high tech, is the print and stick. Now, I have some somewhere. I haven't found it yet. But it would be so convenient, because all you have to do is place this where you want it if this was the sticky stuff and stick it down and then hoop it so this is you know kind of in the center and straight and then take it to your machine and put your needle down to match right there and you're done and take it off and you're done but i don't have that so we're gonna go old-fashioned old school with a sticker and we're also going to, you know, explore the high tech stuff too, just because I have it. Now, if I was doing it just simply on the Luminaire, I wouldn't do all this because I have the technology. So this is just extra. You don't have to do both. I just am. I just am. So any questions so far, Don? I have my back to my iPad, so I can't see what we're... Nope chatting about so so far it's easy uh it's it's such a time saver because you can go ahead and hoop and you don't have to worry about it shifting uh i can't tell you how many times i've hooped something like this and you adjusted it had to be straight this was a long time ago before all the tech and you get it to the machine and I always double check, you know, it's on a multi-needle machine so you don't have to pull everything around and the stabilizers off and you could stitch it like that, but you really shouldn't. So yeah, I get kind of annoyed. Karina says you're naughty if you break your rule. I know. And uh, Misha says she has a new hoodie you need to design for it. Well, this is awful cute. You know what else would be cute? If you could do this all the way around. I'm thinking more like on the back. Mm -hmm. Cindy King says, uh, I liked where Eileen show, sewed down the collar trim. Yeah, she didn't like it. So she sewed it. She just took it to the machine and sewed it. So I don't know how well you guys can see this. I suppose I could make it. We're just having this long discussion, Don and I, about um, chalk markers. <laughs> chalk, marking with chalk. Discussion and, and oh. research and searching, because, man, can't find anything. I wanted the Chaco liners. Do you think I could find anything that would get here before Christmas or and was reasonable price. And was reasonable price. I mean, seriously. Seriously. So there we go. Now you guys can see it. It's not perfect, but whatever. It'll do. Time for a little drink. Hold on. Hold on. It's really dry in here. So, um, also, Eileen put a pin there. So you can see it a little bit better. And I can do that. I have a nice tulip pink pin for sure. You can see the chalk on the black shirt. Mm-hmm. That's why I did it. So right at the top there. So she just marked it with a pin rather than marking the shirt. I just I just did it for camera. So there we go. And remember that we're going to be doing some t-shirt reconstruction 
um, with a dime product, uh, and it's going to be really cool. So this is a good place to start now. The idea of it is that you get it as close as you can without going over. Now we do want it to be straight. So this is the only part that's going to take time is straight. But you see how I folded my template so I can actually look underneath and see where I am. Uh, a, for straightness. That's a handy tip. Yep, yep. and that Good makes trick. it a whole lot easier. Now this one is up a little bit, this one is down, so we're going to move it down just a little bit, and then I'm just going to check everything again. It makes it so much faster, and I used to have a drawer and then a binder with um, plastic pieces in it, and I would just put my templates in there and then reuse them which is handy mm -hmm. Kayla says that it's uh, good to see all the ways to do things and you're a good teacher yeah thank you I try to show everyone everything that we need to do so everyone can do it if you have a 5 by 7 hoop you can do this design if you have bells and whistles you're going to do it differently if you don't then you know, you could still do it. It just may be one or two more steps. So the it's not that bad using a template. In, no, uh, old school is. It's kind of easy actually, and yeah. less stressful, and you don't have to do anything. So what I do is I fold my template in half again, and I can. I don't know if you guys can, but I can see the line going across through the paper. So I just line it up, and this is going to be our center mark. Yeah, that's just about perfect. So this is what we're going to line it up with. Ow! Ow! Uh, Leah says this is where the dime pal would be handy. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I don't have that up. I <laughs> should have. That uh, brilliant point, you could use the pal for it. There's so many different ways of doing this. You could also get your snowman stickers if you have the capability on your machine. And the difference between this and the snowman stickers is my Luminaire and McDreamy had it too and a lot of the um, multi-needle machines. Same grid, but the machine will do the lining up and the straightening for you. And it is really cool. It really works well. So that's like, you know, the mid-level bells and whistles is having the snowman stickers. It's really handy. Um, when it works, it doesn't always work. It has to scan it, it finds it, and then it, you know, lines it up and it puts the needle down so it's perfectly in the dot and you're done. Don't put your snowman sticker upside down. Ask me how I know. <laughs> it won't read it. It doesn't like it. You have to put your product upside down. So, am I going to be good or bad? <laughs> that is the question. Vote on it, guys. It's what not good you... or bad. Karina said naughty. Naughty. Well, <laughs> naughty or nice? <laughs> well, it's that time of year. It's that time of year. So, vote, naughty or nice. Monster hoop when, in breaking rules and using it, or the 5 by 7 Misha says be bad. Be bad. You would, Misha. <laughs> I would get better results using the proper hoop. That's what I'm going to say about that. Lynn says bad. I'm not surprised. I'm getting out the bad hoop. Leah says be a rule breaker. Phyllis says be adventurous. <laughs> yeah, this isn't living on the embroidery edge, just so you know. This is breaking a rule, and I may or may not pay for it, okay? That's the difference. <laughs> living on the edge, you're kind of working with it. Breaking a rule could cost you. Michelle and says break the rules, magnetic is best. That much is true. I'll give you that. And Lynn, Lynn says, come to detention with us, Sue. Okay, <laughs> I'll be in detention. 
So, all right, don't do what I do. <laughs> no cheating, guys, no cheating. Um, so I slip the bottom of the hoop down and what I usually do, it, no matter what kind of hoop I'm doing, is I feel around to make sure that it is generally in the center and then make sure my googly eyes are in the right spot. And then you kind of tuck it up and line it up a little bit and then put it down. Before you do anything else, line the top with the bottom. Now, why do I keep saying that? That's over important. Yeah, over and over again. Because if you don't, you can't see the bottom of the hoop. It is underneath. And if you don't, you will hit the hoop. So make sure you do it. And in fact, I almost always check it again before I start. Now, because we're doing on a flatbed machine that we need, oh, see the other problem I'm having is this is a bit looser than I, see, this is why you don't do it because there's no, nothing's gonna stitch up there, but it is gonna move a little bit. We'll try it so you guys can see. So because it's a flatbed machine, we have to remove everything underneath, which is a weird concept to me <laughs> because I've always had like a tubular machine, so you don't have to. But for this, you have to. So you have to have the back has to be the stabilizer. Otherwise, you're just going to stitch it uh, shut. So what do you do with all this stuff? Well, you don't need to worry too much about it. Make sure it's all up, though. This is what I have done. Honestly, if I have to do something like this, I, I tell Ragnar to do it. So you just kind of roll it. You do want it out of the way. Now, there are clips that go with this um, magnetic hoop, which is an absolutely brilliant idea. I don't know if you knew about that. Did you, Don? Hoop guard. It's, um, it's yeah. really cool. It keeps everything out of the way. Now, I only have the very big one, um, which is not to be used with this hoop. Linda's so, asking if you can uh, tape or pin the neckline. Um, you can tape. I would never, ever, ever recommend using pins. You can do it if you want on your machine. I will never do it on my machine. So yes, good point. And Let's pins take. Tend to leave marks. I. It's not <laughs> worth the risk. <laughs> I paid. We've seen some nasty stuff. We've seen it for sure. We've seen it. So yes, that'll just help give it a little bit of support. It's not stabilizer by any means. But if that makes you feel better, I was just going to wing it. See, now that is living on the embroidery edge because mm. it would probably be okay. Leah's asked, can you, could you put an additional bigger piece of stabilizer in the hoop? Yes. You could, yes, but this should be okay. So this is weird. So there's a couple things you can do. Hair clips being one of them. That's, and uh, two people said they do that. Yeah. If you have, you know, the claw hair clips, which I have, you know, sitting everywhere, but I can't find one right now. Uh, Sharon is asking um, for the Big Star and Mylar Gnome. There are no links mm. to video. If I purchase them, I'll link you up. No. Um, we are going to be recording the Big Star instructional video right after this. And the so, Mylars all have PDF instructions. Yeah, all the ones that I do, yeah. too. But there's no videos on any of the Mylars. Uh, no, it's just stitching. So there will be a video, just a recorded one. Although it should feel like live, but just a recorded one um, for... The big star. Nope. So anyways, you don't have to do all this. If you had a couple of hair clips, claws. Ooh, there's one over there. Can you hand it to me? There's one on my tool rack there. Just so we can see. This this part rolled up nicely. 
something like this. Um, see how how handily that holds it. Works good. Now, the only thing you have to make sure with doing it like this is you got to make sure it's out of the way. To be safe when you're loading it, I would do maybe this side um, or smaller ones. But doesn't that work really well? It actually does. Yeah. I mean, you can pick these up for just a couple of bucks. Yeah, the dollar store has them. Yep. But just seriously be careful. You don't want to wreck your machine. Um, and don't ever put anything on this side because we don't want to interfere with anything. Okay, so, so far we have placement down pat. If I had my sticky, it would still be there and awesome. Double check that nothing's hanging down. Oh, how about we don't take that with us? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, when I taped it, I just taped it right through. So I don't want to stitch it like that. I don't know why I didn't think about that, but I want the non-sticky part through here. So just, just gently, it will help hold it. It's not ideal. Uh, it would be a lot easier if I used the right hoop, but hey. All right, <laughs> over to the machine. Rebel. I know. Over to the machine, yes. yes sir. Yep. All right, so the battle is getting it on and you have to be patient and careful. So I'm gonna hook my hoop in and then I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way and roll it because I had to move it a little bit to get everything hooked up properly. So, I think we're good. This is a project that you have to watch because this could fall down easily. And we've done stuff like oh, that. Oh, ask me how I yeah. know a sweatshirt that I totally ruined and we had to replace. Yeah, yeah, that's why I don't like that. Where did you get the cutting box for the stabilizer? That's from Dime. And I think it is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I showed it to Sam and she looked at me and she said, well, it's about time someone <laughs> came up with that. It's a brilliant idea. I know, and I they know. Make, they're nice. They hold their stabilizers perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, any it's, stabilizer. Any stabilizer. Yeah, yeah. The, it's 12 across. It's, it's worth it. And y you know what everything is and it's super easy. So you can see in my hooping, I am pretty close. Isn't that impressive? Are you impressed, Don? I'm impressed. I am just going to go to edit, and I am going to go to move. So I'm just moving it a little bit. And there we go. That I don't like that. So layout, move. I want it to move like that. So if you have cameras, you can um, look. If you don't, then move the flywheel. See, we have to go down. Oh, oh yeah, it doesn't like that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It doesn't want to move that way. We have to move this way a little bit. See, it's not hard. And look, almost two more. I did it again. I'm sorry. So, how easy is that? Perfectly on. Yep, that works good. Perfectly on. So, old school, old, old school, that's how you do it. And honestly, if I wasn't talking so much, I would have been able to do that really quickly. Um, I think it would be easy, awesome, and easy. So, I'm going to take that sticker off. Now that you guys know how to do that. If I had the snowman, I could just go through the snowman process and it would line everything up. So now we are going to do the high tech stuff. So uh, let's put everything up. Okay, okay. And we are going to try the um, projector. Why? Because I have it. Ooh, it looks good too. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And 
the part that we're interested in is right there. So I'm a little bit off. So <coughs> let's adjust it while we're at it. Isn't that cool? Does it show cool. up really well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Finally, finally. You can change the colors and everything, but um, I love it. So that is yeah. tech. Tech to me. Oh, it does. I'm so happy. Being a nerd makes me happy, you know. So I think I need to rotate a little bit. See how it does it? Just just a little yeah. bit. One one percent I'm that's doing. It. I think that's perfect, it looks like. Uh no, it's still up over the oh, I'm line. Looking at the camera. <laughs> it might not. Yeah, it should. Let's see. Well, I don't want it to be crooked. No. Maybe it was a different kind. See, I ha I'm not quite up. This one is. Let me have a look. I don't want it crooked either. Oh, that's so cute, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Isn't it? So, good positioning. Up a little bit more. Up. What do you think? Is that close enough? Maybe I have to move it over. See, this yeah, is what... That looks better. That's better. This is what takes longer. Um, I mean, absolutely, you can be precise, but now I've got it perfect. I had to move it over a little bit. Yeah, it looks good from what I can see on camera. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Isn't that cool? So if you want to tighten stuff up a little bit before you get started is when you can do it. See, my hair clip is um, safe on this side, safe here, and this tape worked at this end. Michelle is asking, does the camera ever need to be calibrated? Calibrated? No. It's all set. It's a high-level camera, so we don't usually no. mess around with anything. So, yeah. Robbie Lynn says, it's amazing that these machines have attitude when they don't want to do something. <laughs> Captain Jack's pretty good. Um, he doesn't have too much attitude. Um, uh, I think... Boys downstairs do occasionally. Well, Barry did, but they we don't, don't have Barry anymore. Barry, Barry was bad. Barry was bad. So I'm all lined up and ready to go. So, yeah, cool. you can use the PAL, you can, there's so many different ways of doing it. Whatever makes you happy or whatever's easier. Um, personally, I think if you have the tech, use it. If you don't have the tech, you don't need it. So, you could still do it. I mean, if you don't have dime stickers, go to the dollar store and get some like garage sale stickers in, in different bright colors and do it that way. Just draw your own lines on it. It did look spot on. So here's one problem I'm gonna have without it being tight enough because it's a bigger hoop is I'm gonna have a slight bit of puckering. What I might do is let me see if I can get it first. Let's see. Air wash. I'm going to stop my machine. And it is perfectly right on. Stop O. Yes, thank you. And what I'm going to do, see, this is what we used to call floating, which is, I was actually quite shocked when <laughs> floating. I discovered floating meant um, something completely different. So I've got a piece of tear and wash away. And I just think because I'm using this bigger hoop that I am needing a little more support. So I'm taking my tear away wash away and I'm going to float it under the hoop. And then all we have to do is tear it away at the end. So it's just a little bit more support um, and it saves you from hooping. So let's see if it makes a difference. So just tear away underneath. If you wear it, don't tear it, that's the rule. But if you need a little extra support, 
it's perfect for it. But these, this is why I always say use the correct size hoop for your design because these are the problems that you get. I'm thinking the bling uh, looks very blingy. And yes, I have positioning perfectly on. So much fun. <laughs> so wasn't that easy, Don, to do it? It's very easy, yeah. The only part that I would have to get used to is this rolling up bit. But it's not hard. Nancy says, I have such machine envy watching. New to machine embroidery and have an um, NQ700E. Hey, you know what? What I usually say to people who say that they have machine envy is, uh, your needle goes up and down the same way mine does. So mine has bells and whistles that, not necessarily, but it, it's cool, but they can make it easier. But if you notice, to line up with the dot here, it took me like two seconds, and it was a little more fiddly to do it with the projector. However, this one's perfect. I was slightly off on it. Uh, not that anyone would have noticed, but yeah, it, as long as you have a embroidery machine, I always use Lynn as a good example. She has uh, Mickey, she calls them, because of course I made her name it. And Mickey is, I don't even know how old Mickey is, but it took me a while to figure out how to attach the hoops. Um, but she can stitch anything she wants in the 5x7 hoop. That's all she uses, and she's incredibly happy with it because she does not want bells and whistles, and she's learning how to do the stickers and placements. So you can do it for sure. The extra fabric is bulky, which can make it cumbersome. I'm just not used to it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I'm just literally not used to it because uh this may be the first t-shirt that i've done look at that precision placement don what do you think yeah, yeah. yep it's a hundred percent perfect so a little bit angle and a little bit learning old school ways to place things is, is good in case your machine has issues glad i learned it that way first yeah you know, some, sometimes I do it old school and sometimes I do it fancy-wise. I mean, I have it, so I'm going to use it. Now we're going to do a thread change and I'm going to put my King Star Metallic Silver on because you have to have silver snowflakes. Isn't that a rule, Don? What? Yes. Silver snowflakes? Absolutely. Fun to watch, fun to do. I just have to get used to the extras. Just, I did lots of t-shirts in my time and the multi-needles, you could hoop it differently, so. But it wasn't, you know, impossible. It wasn't even difficult. Janet says she always uses a water-soluble topper. I do not find that that is necessary in any way, shape, or form. No, I wouldn't let you. <laughs> no need for it. No. Even it, like with towels, I don't need it. Not now because you use a knockdown yeah, stitch or whatever. Everyone used to use it and it's because we didn't have these fantastic stitches that um, we do now. Personally, I have never used it, and Don and I have been running a business for 10 years. I have been running it for 20, and I've never had any issues, so. Can you see over the, yeah, yeah. perfect. So if you, if you want to, then use it. Um, I personally don't think you have to. I don't think it's gonna make any difference on something like this, or a sweatshirt, or anything. <coughs> oh, 
All right, that silver is rocking, rocking, rocking. Yeah, I know. Um, let's see. I still use old school, but would love to use a bell or a whistle. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is fun. I I will say it is fun. I'm still waiting for my level three bells and whistles. Uh, hopefully that'll come before the new year, but maybe next week. When I finally get it, I'll go live and do a video. Yeah, you cross your fingers. I cross both fingers for you. I want to ask brother why it takes like four months for it to get here to Canada. Come on. I know. It's torturous because on the machine, it shows you what you can't have. <laughs> it's it's grayed out. I got rid I didn't get mad, Look but, you can have, but you got mad. I yelled and Don came running up and I said, you won't believe what brother did. And we laughed. It was just funny. So, yes. Hey, Sue, I have a challenge for you and Don. Can you come up with a swirly paisley design with hidden skulls for a shirt hoodie? Pretty sure we have that. Pretty sure we have a couple like that. I have one with an ombre background. It's a circle. Yeah, we'll send it to you. Yay. Would you use the same stabilizer on a sweatshirt? Good question, and the answer is yes. For shirts, you need cutaway. Uh, fusible just makes it easier, in my opinion. But whatever cutaway you have in hand, now I did support it further with a bit of tearaway and you can see it did actually make a difference yeah. um, it, because I'm doing it but wrong. your main is cut away. Your main is cut away. You're for you sure. wear it, you don't care. Yeah, that's the, I just knew you'd, I rarely use tearaway. Yeah. Honestly, I, I've had a big roll of it for 20 years. You cut away for <laughs> Yeah, pretty, pretty much, yeah for what we do, but I mean, we have one little applique to look, to do. Um, isn't this awesome, cute little design? I think the bling is making it for sure. Um, I love tearaway, says Jennifer Alexander. See, I just don't use it for anything. I had to really dig there to get out the tearaway for this. Little bit extra support. And of course, Dime makes awesome stabilizers. I bought the Sally Tomato embroidery slash purse designs, and I went ahead and stocked up a little bit on the stuff I love for applique. Oh. Uh, when you tear and when you cut. So th that's obviously not the question that you're asking. Uh, yeah, I know it's Lynn, Lynn was asking. Cut is away. Cut yeah, big time. Cut away. It will give you more stability, and it will stick around. So you cut it away when you're done, and I'll show you guys this at the end because I have both tear away and cut away now in it. Tear away, uh, you tear around the outside, but eventually as you wash it, the rest of it will be gone. It'll it'll go away sort of thing. So it'll look great when, if you just use tear away on something like this, for example. You can make this look great with just tear away, but when you wash it, what's going to happen? It'll start it won't be flat. It might, won't be anything like that. Might be okay Not for this a couple of washes, but after it's just gonna scrunch up. I have embroidery that on sweatshirts that I did ten years ago, and I wa wear it all the time, all winter, and washed it, and it still looks as good as the day I stitched it. Yeah, cut away, 
will give you long lasting support. It's much stronger and it doesn't go anywhere. So you get that foundation for your stitches that sticks around. So it's kind of awesome. But I don't, I, I rarely use tearaway. Sometimes I use it on the mug rugs or sometimes with purses and stuff. Silver and gold. I'm so excited. I like it. It could be a nice Christmas tea. It, it's really a nice design. And look, everything's flat. People always say, oh, how do I avoid puckering? Well, poop it in the right hoop and have the right amount of support. And that's right it. Stabilizer. Yeah. The correct stabilizer for the job. So... I am going to take off my beautiful silver Kate and says she wants to do the design with blues and silver on a navy tee. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, that will that be awesome. awesome. So, I dropped scissors. That's what that, oh, that crash that was? bang was. I totally missed the table. I must be Oops. a little bit over more than I thought I was, so I just basically dropped them on the floor. So this is applique, which applique looks awesome on shirts. I'm wondering if this wouldn't look good on jeans. I don't know where on jeans you'd put it, but I'm just kind of thinking you could even take one part on the side. Pocket line down the front of the leg. Yeah, maybe. maybe. It could be. All right, I am using cool. my favorite stuff from Dime. It's Fuse and Stick, this stuff. I'm going to cut it a little more reasonable. So I fused it to the fabric, and then I am going to peel back the paper and it's sticky and repositionable and you get perfect applique so i truly love this stuff so i'm gonna place it there's no room for chicken and give it a little push down look how perfect that is especially good for fussy cutting like this yeah it's good stuff and it's removable and movable now, I'm going to have to do a little trimming in the hoop because I really don't want to... Oh! Oops! Okay. Yeah. No, that's my bad. That's my bad. Um, I needed to know where to place it, though. So I'm going to go back to the single outline. Yeah, right there and just stitch this down and then I'm going to trim it. The other thing um, that's great about using the fuse and stick is that everything's nice and sharp when you trim it. You don't have any fraying and anything like that. So it's really nice. Yeah, it's a little bit of an oops, but also not a big deal. So I am going to trim it here because I'm still a little nervous about moving the hoop out what are you giggling at you the eyeball on your scissors oh are you gonna do that every time <laughs> i do every time wow i don't know why it's just all funny. right so i'm not comfortable doing that either so i'm gonna very carefully very carefully go back to the desk i gotta do something right i gotta do something right on this right yeah no more cheating I just have to be careful. I was just trying to avoid it, but I don't need to. I really want to make a good cut. So I have a little bit left over. So I'm just gonna stick this on the shiny side so it comes off again and uh, save it. If you're doing a whole bunch of shirts, cut it up in four and then do it like that and you'd use it all so it sticks 
but it's not a permanent stick right now. You can still lift it up even where I pushed it down. See? But notice that there's no frayed edges. There's nothing. And you can get really, really close to the stitching. I love the stuff. Like I said, when I got the Sally Tomato, I grabbed a big thing of it because I think it's awesome for applique. Awesome. So I'm struggling a little bit, but forgive me. That's just me being me. Just me. Looks good. Um, yeah, it's a little bit off here. But see how I did that? That's the other thing you can do. Because it's sticky, you can just roll it, sort of, and then trim it. How's that for a tip and a trick, Don? That's pretty good. Yep. Yeah. And you can use smaller scissors, but I can pretty much precision cut it by doing that. So I won't have any big, huge pieces hanging over anyways, because you can see it. So smaller scissors, all of that. So Judy Quilt, I'm picking up all the biddly bits. And Nom Nom says bye. All right, back to the machine. And, and we will try not to struggle too much. And be very gentle. Make sure that this isn't underneath. And slowly and carefully squish everything down and don't let it run away. That wasn't my best trim in the world. See, now I've got it under here. Hmm. I don't know how that's going to cover. Hmm. If I was doing this on my own, I would fiddle around with it a bit more. But seeing how we're live, I don't need to sit and stitch. TJ Tech, thank you very much. You always share such great information. Yeah, people have told me I'm full of it before. <laughs> you sure that was the information, yes. I have lots to share. Lots of good stuff. 20 years of experience is all yours. So it's not perfect, but I think the uh, stitches will cover it, so. Lorelai says she uses silky lightweight fusible. Yeah, that would that would be good. I like the sticky part. So let's see how well I did. I can always trim it up when I'm done. But I really do like it because the fabric is flat and um, not frayed and it's it's easy to cut. I know I made it look a little difficult, but I have tiny duckbill scissors from Gypsy Quilter. I have right on top of my machine, I have my stork scissors. And these are my fancy ones. So they're pointed, they're sharp, and they're little. And that's what I use for um, precision cutting or getting little bits in that sort of thing. Oh, that looks cute just like that, too. I am going to put the swirl in it. So, it covered up mostly everything. Usually it does. I don't know why I had such difficulty trimming it. Just me being me, I guess. I have the Tula Pink mini duck bills. Why don't I have Tula Pink mini duck bills? Why don't I have Tula Pink duck bills? You have Tula Pink scissors. Consider yourself scissors. lucky. I have trim scissors, but I don't have duck bills. You don't do applique. I do. Rarely. Not enough to Sometimes. warrant. Not enough to warrant Tula Pink. When you touch my Tula Pink trim scissors. I won't. He gets all possessive. Laughed at me because I did. Well, but now I understand. Now you understand. They're yes. only used for one thing, and if I catch you using them for something else, pow. <laughs> I had to steal from myself for the upstairs sewing machine. Oh, yeah. I had to steal, I have a pair, like the trim scissors here, and <laughs> then I had fabric cutting scissors, yeah. and then I had big fabric cutting scissors at my cutting table, 
but I needed something upstairs and it drives me nuts because I'm <laughs> looking for the ones that I stole to put upstairs because <laughs> I use them all the time. Yeah, I said darn it. So putting in the green thread, although you could leave this just like this, it's adorable. Good. Yeah, I like it. So no puckering, no problems. Lousy trimming, but you know, some days are just simply not good trimming days. And that's what today is. I accept it. I'll own it a little bit too. Super cute design. Fuse and stick. And I, I'd love a house full of that. A whole yes. storeroom of it. If you have to fuse, you might as well stick it too. I think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I don't use it all the time, but I could. What are you snapping your fingers at? Oh, the dog. Is that tank? Look how nice and bright that green is. Ooh, I like it. I could have used metallic. Leah says, just get out the fabric markers and touch up the small spots. Um, or my scissors. Or it'll just simply come off when I wash it. Cover it up pretty good. Yeah, there's a couple of... Uh, I mean, if you're going to be that picky, there's a couple. That's what she's talking about, but... Even just doing what I just did makes it whoop, makes it look better. It's a nice design. It's a beautiful design. I, I do like the silver and gold though. So what a absolutely cute design. So free from dime, there is a link in the description uh, where you can get the design for free and try pooping it like this. So try doing a shirt. Make sure you bring up all the shirt around the back so you don't sew it closed. And uh, make sure you have the right support. Fusible is your friend for something like this. And uh, don't break any rules. Try to use the 5x7 hoop <laughs> because it will look better. It will look better. I love the swirl. I That's awesome. That and silver and blue, so I think, yeah, you could play That's around with idea. colors. Um, beautiful. I was actually thinking, I pondered it, of using a color like this for uh, the snowflakes. It's a very, very, very pale pink. Because yeah. I thought that would look really good. It doesn't show up. I think I got my mini Tula Pink Duck Bills at Quilt in a Day. I want to say it's one of their daily sales. Yeah. Did you wash the shirt first? Nope. Nope. I don't wash anything first. When I wash it, though, I am 100% confident that it will look the same. So, now we're going to deconstruct this whole thing. Happy music! Yay! Linda says, uh, let me switch here first, because that's what you're doing. Yep. Uh, Linda says that her, her t-shirt is red, so she's going to use green applique fabric with gold swirls. Beautiful. Yeah, gold swirls would be great. So now I'm going to deconstruct this whole thing. Oh, I just got the label there. So we're going to flip this behind, and we're going to look at the front, and we're going to look at the back. So one thing I want to say before I go any further, the back of the embroidery does not matter. So many people, when they first start embroidery, they want the back of it to be as pretty as the front. And I'm here to tell you that that's not going to happen. Nobody's wearing their shirt inside out. Nobody's going <laughs> to see it's gonna look like you stitched over stabilizer, okay? That's just simply what it is. Um, don't get your knickers in a knot about it. It's the way it is. Now, you can, if you're doing it for 
uh, doing this design or whatever for a kid, you can put iron-on cloud cover once you get everything, you know, cleaned up and whatnot to make it feel better. But don't go crazy trimming. Uh, I'm going to show you how to trim properly. Cut away. Even though I have some of it fused, I'll see what I can do. But a lot of people get out their scissors and literally spend an hour trimming. And you really don't need to do that. That is a complete and utter waste of your time. You need to leave an inch uh, around the design. So isn't that beautiful? I like. So that's, awesome that's the front and it looks good. And this is the back. So I did slip my tear away to give myself a little extra support because I was having problems. Now, when you uh, rip tear away, I don't suggest just doing it like this. You should hold the stitches down a little bit. This yeah, is, you don't want to put pressure on them, right? No. This is gorgeous tear away, though. So. Now you can see I have excess stabilizer, the fusible, and that's fine. So I'm not going to go in and pick all these out. You can if you want, but honestly, when you wash it, it is going to be gone. So there we go. So big pieces is what I'm doing. Now this one has come up a bit, so I'll tear it. If you want to, you can, but you certainly don't need to. So now... I didn't iron it 100% fully, so um, I turned my iron down so it stayed, but it wasn't hot, so I can pull it up. If you can't do this, if you ironed it really well, then you're going to want to heat it up a little bit, and which is probably better because I have little, little bits of glue there, and then you can pull it up when it's hot and keep it up and it won't it won't glue down so when you're trimming yeah don't want to trim the shirt you do not so this is why we do it a little bit away from the design see how I did that now I can fine-tune it if I want to but I'm not in any danger of trimming the shirt. So let me turn it this way a little bit. So this is what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be artwork. I am gonna go in a little bit in there, but I'm gonna do it after. This is just the first quick trim. Karina has a good question. What? <laughs> when, um, how important is it to use the same type of fabric for the applique when you're doing a t-shirt? The same type? Yeah. Is it important? No. Or you can just use any fabric? You can use any fabric that you want. I used a Charm Square. Um, I was going to use some sparkly HTV, but I didn't. So it's not important. Use what you want. I used, like I said, Christmas fabric. Um, just regular quilters fabric. Looks good. So anything that you want, for sure. So again, holding it this way so you don't cut it, your shirt. Now I have done that and it sucks. It sucks. Have you done that yet, Don? Um, cut yeah. the shirt? Yes. Yeah. I have. It happens. So you don't have to cut in here because we want this stabilizer to stabilize the shirt in between. So the only thing I'm going to do, and you know what, it really is better to iron because so you won't have all these dots, but I just don't want to take the time. But see, you can almost see through it. So I'm just... You have to leave some around it. Yeah, people don't understand that. This is why my shirt is going to look fantastic uh, after I wash it. Yeah. And then the people that do use tearaway, even though you really shouldn't, <coughs> um, they like to 
tear it all right off yeah. up to the stitches and tear out the insides, and then you've got no stabilizer left. Yeah, there's nothing. So that is, you could do it a little bit neater than I did. And again, please heat the stuff before you pull it off. That would come out in the wash though, right? Uh, it should, yeah. Or I'll heat an iron with uh, a piece of um, yeah. stabilizer and pull it off. But save yourself the trouble and do it right. You could do this a little bit neater. You do not need to cut in between and around. And you want to leave at least an inch, half an inch, I guess, around. I mean, I kind of hacked this. Uh, so I would normally do it a little bit neater than that, but I didn't, so... Let's see the good side again. Let's see the good side. Now, even though I cut everything off, it still looks fantastic. And I will wash this next time we do laundry. I'll wash it, and I'll show you guys how awesome it still looks. Um, if you want to iron it, personally, I don't iron t-shirts because, you know, seriously, I don't iron. Um, That's what two minutes in a dryer is for. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to be careful of the thread that you don't directly iron it or your thread will melt. Look at my positioning. Do you see good. that? Yeah, good job. It's not 100% perfect, but it's close enough. I can't tell. Let's see what's hap what's going to happen with these little... There's only three little white bits here that I think it's just the sticky stuff, so I think it'll come off when we wash. So there you go. Now, you can see you still need the support here for sure. So those are the rules. If you're going to break the rules, which I rarely do, and that was nerve-wracking, so I don't think I'll do it again. <laughs> But you have to compensate for it. And you know what? Putting that tear away underneath made a big difference. So there you have it. Create your own shirt. Step outside your comfort zone. It's not something that we've done a lot of for sure. You can do it. Fusible, stitch away, hoop it properly, and trim it properly. And I will will do a running total on this to see how great it looks after however many washings. Anytime the girls come over to do laundry, we'll throw this oh, in. Man. Yep, and we'll count how many times it get wa it gets washed, and that'll prove to you that this is the way that you do it. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys like this video. I hope you guys learned how to work with a t-shirt with a beautiful design an applique on a t-shirt an applique on a t-shirt and make your designs last and i'll see you guys in the next video bye everyone bye this is really cute i like the